guys and welcome to this new tutorial on Falcon BMS. We're still on version 434, this time update 4 since the last video, so we've upgraded it uh, to the latest update. But this time we'll be covering something that some of you might be a bit scared to start, is just speaking about the uh, campaign itself. Um, so you're new to Falcon, you don't really know how things work uh, it's a bit new for you the dynamic engine and stuff like this but you have a fair knowledge of uh, the plane and uh, you want basically get yourself into it what I do recommend is to follow up those steps uh, I don't say those are perfect but at least it will get the things done on your end uh, trying to understand the first steps on how to manage your own campaign and to probably change a bit the course of actions. So there we go. We are on stock uh, Korea, KTO, um, and we're starting the campaign here. So we have several theater or at least scenarios we can select from. As you can see, each scenario has its own situ situation here. So for example, um, let's see um, the uh, one that more probably will be uh, the standard one. You have the target spirit, this is probably a bit easy, uh, as well as the rolling fire, which is the stock. I would say, consider myself as the being the standard one. So, first thing first, uh, the thing you want to check here, once you've selected, is the challenge rating. Um, I put that to ace um, myself because I want the scenario to be challenging. Uh, and honestly, I definitely want that to be challenging, otherwise it's a bit too easy. So I already set that to ace, um, and you will have a couple information here. So the first thing is here, uh, the uh, scenario uh, name. So here we're going to go for rolling fire. And there you got um, difficulty level. Uh, some of them are easy, you see medium, hard, medium, impossible. Yeah, the bear trap is kind of very difficult. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, so um, there you go. It's, um, it's, it's the main information about the, um, the theater itself. Then you've got here the mass camp max campaign days. Although 30 days, I know that after something like 15 to 18 days usually uh, especially with the ones that we had on hosted for a long time it, it starts to be a bit buggy after a couple i would say a fortnight so uh, 15 days um and you've got the description of the situation here and uh, you can select the side uh you want to fight for either you're going for the blue side or the red side it's up to you to select um, since we're in an F-16 simulation, we'll stick to the F-16 and uh, the different squadrons that are being offered um, by the game. So, by default, uh, the um, scenario will uh, put you on a base uh, with a given squadron. So here, for example, uh, so we'll see, we repeat itself here, it's a Kun Center base, the uh, 80th uh, fighter squadron, uh, 24 ships, uh, which are block 40s, and general here means it's for general purpose. It means that uh, you can do any type of mission uh, with that plane. So let's go and commit. This is the first step. So you're going to have this screen. Um, so what it is, um, what is it? It's it's kind of simple actually, if you look into it and the priorities, is basically what the game engine uh, or the campaign engine will try to focus its mission on. And those sliders, you can either manually define those or you can let the game engine or the campaign engine decide on its own. If you start moving around those cursors, obviously those this is going to change the HQ setting. So those are the target types. So what type of target will you be targeting uh, at most? Uh, so you see naval is one of the most uh, co um, command centers, logistics, air defenses and radars. Uh, those are part of the most um, 
I would say uh, a preferred targets. So this is the target types. Then you've got the mission types. Um, this is again something that you want to uh, change depending on what you uh, would like to would would prefer. Uh, here again, HQ is set automatically. If you move one of the sliders, obviously it's going to change uh, from HQ so from automatic to uh, manual. So bear in mind that if you uncheck that, it means that you'll be the one focusing the type of missions during the game, um, depending on what you would like to focus on. Then you've got the packs. So the packs are basically the uh, target areas on which you would like to focus and each sector, uh, those are divided in sectors. And those sectors basically will represent a priority level. So as you can see, the ones in um, really red are going to be the ones you want to target at most. So currently it's North of Thale. Uh, you are the, the campaign engine will obviously um, try to focus its energy, energy in creating a gap here and protecting Seoul from the enemy. So here you can change slider again. It's going to change the uh, HQ if you if you dare. Uh, here those are the packs um, and this is basically just changing depending on the one you click. It's either you select from the list or you click on one of those areas. So as I am a bit lazy in this type of mission uh, and campaign, I'm going to set OK for the campaign engine to uh, select um, the mission types and set up the priorities. So it's before we do go and start a campaign, there are two ways you want to do it. Uh, either you want to let yourself go and have the campaign engine doing air, all the work for you and preparing the missions. Although once you get a bit ex of experience, uh, you might have a problem with uh, the fact that the uh, the game itself uh, will allocate stupid missions to uh, to you and your uh, and in your in your teammates um, from the from the squadron. So you might want to change that, um, given the fact that you might want to have a bit of mastery on um, on the type of mission you want to go for. So there are two, two ways to do it. Either you let the engine decide the type of uh, and frag the missions for you, or you want to do it. So what I do recommend here, if you want to do it, is click on maximize the map. And then we've got, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Click on this one, which is the uh, squadron records. And there you go. So you've got here the information about the squadron. Um, uh, the thing that most we, we had uh, before committing, basically. So you've got the squadron, the pilots. And then here, one thing that is important is that you want to stick or untick the box here. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to uh, untick the box because I want to set my own missions. So currently I'm the only player because I'm playing single campaign, um, single player campaign, so I'm not doing that in multiplayer. Although if you want, uh, you can definitely um, save your situation uh, and ask one of your friends to come with you and fly the campaign itself. Uh, as long as you're able to connect in multiplayer together, uh, you can host the campaign and fly your own campaign with one of your friends. So let's go back, minimize the window. Um, I'm ready. Um, so we're going to hit and start campaign here. There we go. So campaign is active. Um, in a couple seconds, flight should be starting to spawn. As you can see here already, we've got uh, F-16 departing from, uh, from the airbase. Um, and what you can do if you want to see what they're doing, it's click on the plane and you will see their flight plane popping up to see what exactly they're targeting. Um, so that's interesting um, to see if there is already a flight uh, going into the area you want to uh, you want to go for. So before you start planning something, um, I would say that if you're if you're if you want to manage your own missions and own flight, I would hard I would strongly suggest that you put that on halt or stop. 
Halt is a parameter that you would select when you're in multiplayer. If you were in multiplayer and you select Halt, it will actually stop the clock for everyone, not just you. Meaning that if you select only stop in multiplayer, it will try to stop for you. But as long as the others are not in stop position, it's definitely going to uh, continue um, counting the timer uh, on, on top. So stop halt when you are uh, where, where if you want to stop currently the uh, campaign progress and you can see current time is 5 a.m. Uh, on day one. So a couple parameters um, we've set that that on the last tutorial if you want to change that you can refer yourself to the last tutorial and do it. Now we're going to focus on fragging missions. So what it is, what is it to frag a package um, from a campaign and do it on your own? So, for example, um, I want to do and relief um, the um, those friendlies here from the artillery battalions they are facing. So why not trying to do uh, either uh, air interdiction or uh, a strike on those positions? So first thing you want to check is doing a recon. So the recon will actually give you a 3D representation of what's happening on the ground. And if you've got static units or uh, moving units, so that's interesting to know. And then we'll focus also on the status. The status will obviously be full because it's the start, it's the yeah first seconds of the campaign, and obviously everyone is fresh. So zoom out a bit, and as you can see, this is a heart battalion. So this is um, so um, all those alteries are behind walls, uh, reinforced, and um, so the best here is to try to target them from air, from air air to ground and uh, making sure that we uh, support the friendlies on the ground and uh, rip off the artillery uh, from uh, killing our the friendly battalions that we've got on the ground. So this is everything you've got here. So we've got the heart artillery battalion with all the units that we've got on the ground so you can see a list of all the threats that you got you might be facing um, so this is already interesting and I, and I do recommend that you um, um, you focus on that as you can see uh, s60 means that they have AAA and fire can is automated AAA basically um, so you need to be careful with that um, you've also got soldiers um, and most importantly, in terms of threats, uh, I think I've so SA7. So you've got man pads as well, and you can see more or less your, 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 their positions. So they're not showing up for now, but no worries, it's uh, um, showing up still that they're they're still around somewhere. So yeah, and then you've got only close by. Uh, so this is the heart site. So this is the heart site. So those are the buildings that you've got. So uh, you've got uh, bunkers, ardent bunkers, the underground factories. So the only thing that you can see here is basically the air conditioning unit from the uh, from the factory. <laughs> so this is always very interesting to see. Um, and then you see here the value of those targets. I would rather focus on the one with a high value on, on st uh, the start of the campaign because this is obviously the things that will have uh, a, a bigger impact um, on the campaign itself. So we'll go back here later on uh, to frag that. And uh, so yeah, we're going to have an error interdiction or maybe a strike, well, we'll see. So, so we're going to tra target uh, mainly this one. So I'm going to secure the fact that I'm currently holding my cursor over it and I'm going to add package. So this is my starting time. So you need 20 minutes um, to getting the plane, get everything ready. So the timer will actually put you in 3D 20 minutes from uh, takeoff time. So if your takeoff time is uh, 
2048 basically as uh, as soon as you frag your package um, you're going to go directly into the 3d environment uh, there is not you're not going to speed up the time um, so for example here I'm going to put myself into 530 so I'm going to select so either you can select hours minutes seconds so I'm going to change the set the minutes here so to 530 and then I'm going to hit uh, new so as you can see we're the ADS so I'm going to select then the type of plane that we're in so uh, if I recall we're block uh, 40s 80th quadrant so the first role is obviously uh, air interdiction which we actually could keep uh, which could be interesting the size of the flight so two ships should be enough and the scales um, we uh, sh I would recommend that you put yourself into um, higher skill base because it will also impact the AI that will fly with you. If you are on a 100% human squadron, then in this case, it won't change anything um, because the uh, because the skill is just depending on the person that flies. So once you've done that, uh, you're going to hit and press OK. So there you go. Um, you've got a first f uh, flight from that package that is fragged and for which um, you already have an area uh, where you can actually frag those um, uh, artillery battalion because you see those are all the same types of units uh, battalions on the ground. If I want to add um, a new squad, a new flight in the squadron, uh, in the in the package, sorry. Uh, I can do that, and this time, for example, I'm going to frag an escort, um, or maybe a seed. Yeah, let's go for a seed, for example. Those guys will actually assist us in a seed, um, and wipe any type of enemies that will be in uh, in the vicinity. So you want to keep that from the same squadron, unless you know you have some space in another one from which you can frag, uh, because you could actually add F. 15s, F4s, any type of aircraft that are actually available from a campaign perspective. Uh, but since the campaign engine is taking care of those, I would strongly recommend to stick to your squadron and making sure that you only frag the ones that you are 100% sure that you can have availability. Um, so let's go for the SID and hit OK. So now our package is two flights of two. Uh, one is the um, uh, AI, air interdiction, and the other one is the seed. So now I'm done. I don't want to get, um, you could add up to five flights. So for a number, for a total of 20, uh, of 20 planes uh, in the same flight, in the same package. So that's almost every everyone from, this, from the squadron that could be uh, taking active planes uh, into into the air um, so there you go uh, we're going to press OK and we're going to select here the seed the AI mission so I'm going to place myself at the lead as lead of that mission and um, I'm going to change a bit the shape of the flight plan so for example I know um, that I want to have all the targets between five and six. So I'll take, I'll, I'll watch out the ammunition that I have, and we'll see how we can go with that. Um, this is an ASA two, um, so obviously I want to be careful with that. Um, I see here that we've got also an ASA two, so I definitely want to be careful with that. And if I want to be um, cautious and then I will go and plan a, uh, plan th uh, threat sure points so SA2 accept and I'm going to place this one over the area so that's a good thing that we've got the seat with us because they will definitely get um, into the way of the SA2 and get rid of those because we need uh, them to be uh, off once we uh, once we start uh, targeting so I'll set up another one it accept then we'll got the range so as you can see uh, the two SA2s are a bit too close so you see the circles here um, 
they're going to cover the area so I don't want to get too close from them so what I'll do is that I'll adapt my flight plan uh, depending on what's uh, on what's available and then I can change uh, the seat flight in order for them to not directly be over the targets but for example being in the middle of the uh, the um, the SAMs and trying to take care of those SAMs for us. So 10 miles between the two points, I'm okay with that. And um, and then we can have a couple of things we're going to check. So first, um, we're going to go into the ATO. So we see our flight, the flights from the squadron here, and we want to make sure that we plan the flight accordingly and and the shapes and the points are aligned and things like this. So I know mine is going to be um, an air interdiction. So I think air interdiction is here. And then I'm going to check the package number 3516. So 3516, this is this one. So I'm going to open up this one and tick the box here so I can show up um, the flight plans from both flights in the same package. So you see there, uh, those are the uh, waypoints uh, that uh, from uh, from the uh, from uh, Satan uh, six, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So there we go. And you could actually do the same for any other flights that you have in the vicinity. So um, uh, if you tick that box, you would see the other flights that are fragged uh, by the campaign engine. Um, so that's always interesting to see. Uh, if you don't want to see that and you want to remove this, uh, you can. It's just convenient and you need to know that actually it exists. Um, and you can uh, come back to the air tasking order to only see the flights uh, from your package. Um, so yeah, um, so first thing is uh, getting to know the briefing right, and the environment. So the briefing is really important here because it will give you the information about uh, the vicinity, the target area, the conditions for the flight, and the, con and the victory conditions. So we've got here uh, our flight two, the seed flight two, and we've got the information about um, the takeoff time, uh, what time we push, uh, the type of aircrafts, the target, when will be over target, and the IFF information. The threats, air to air, surface to air, so ground to air. And um, yes, so it includes obviously the SA-2 that we have seen, plus the SA-5 that apparently could be also a threat in the vicinity um, of the location. But as long as we have an ACM with us, that should be mostly okay. Then we've got the steer points. So the flight plans, we see it goes from uh, 1 to 11. Keep in mind the last waypoint is very important. Then we've got the COM ladder, uh, important from uh, Uniform, uh, Victor. Those are basically the uh, the ones that you uh, you can uh, you will have preset in uh, your data cartridge. The IFN information, including the the, uh, the changes uh, uh, the changes over time, and the flight setup with the uh, ordinances that you will carry with you. Then you've got the weather. Uh, for now, it's a static weather, so obviously it will not change. And then we've got the support. So we've got an AWAX, and we got a tanker. Obviously, the tanker is quite far away from a position, so it's not going to change much. Rules of engagement. Uh, this is pretty much standards and the emergency procedures, well, uh, you need to just remember that good luck, <laughs> obviously. Um, you can change, so you're going to be in the order here, and this is really important All in the right, briefing, uh, because you're going to change that. Um, you're going to remember that, especially for your IDM, so your uh, um, your IDM, so the, the what we call um, abusively uh, a data link in Falcon. Um, you're going to be flight one, so you're going to be flight with uh, one, 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 two, 
and this is going to be flight 2, so that you're, they're going to be 2, 1 and 2, 2. So whenever you want to um, set that up on your uh, IDM this, and DD, this is important uh, if you want to see their position in real time um, on your uh, HSD. Um, one other thing is that since you're the first uh, flight uh, as per Falcon setup, you're going to be Victor 15 for the intra-flight comms, and Satan is going to be Victor 16 from the, for also for the intra-flight intra, intra comms. Um, everything is set here, so you can see that intra-flight set here, you can see 15, um, and uh, the other one will be on 16. Just for information, this is important. And as long as you go, if you if we had other flights up to five, it would be 15, 16, 17, 18, and blah, 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 and so on. There we go. We are done with that page, uh, and we are going to change that with the loadout now. Uh, by default, they um, offer to carry GBU 31s, which are not a, which is not bad given the current situation, given the fact that we're um, over an area where this is going to be tricky, uh, ASA twos, and definitely it would be great if we could carry. Uh, GPS guided bombs and uh, with uh, a good blast radius. Um, so I'm going to stick to that. Important to check if I'm going to keep the ECM with me, which is the case. And then you could change the ordinance depending on what you want. I already covered that in the last video, so I'm not going to change that. Um, all right, so I'm done with that. And uh, now uh, what should we be doing? Well. Um, first thing is going to change the IFF plans, the COM plans, and hit save. Everything will be set up um, as per the briefing, and this is very important for that uh, first part. Now what we're going to do is uh, set up a couple of steer points. So as we did before, we're going to go back into the recon check the heart battalion and I'm going to select a target here that is more or less in the middle of it um, not too bad I could take this one to be honest this is quite uh, interesting the blast could be also affecting all those you did in uh, close to it so what I'm going to do here is desi designate as a steer point so remember this target steer point do not change the values from 1 to 11 because those are your flight plan steer point information, waypoint information. So it was stopping as we saw earlier to 11. So I have a, a, a good range um, of before. So from 1 to 24, I can use those values. And so I'm going to select here 15. So 15 for that target is going to go there and I'm going to accept. Um, I uh, will also try to get the other ones that I could select here. Uh, maybe this one's going to be interesting. Let me check the others. Yeah, this one might be also interesting. Um, I don't know if this is a quite a central position. Nevertheless, uh, it could be interesting. So we see those are split in two ways. Um, so those are two locations close by. So the, most of the the targets are here, and the other targets are there. Um, so we've got less targets here, and we've got most targets there. Um, so I'm a bit. Um, I'm probably going to stick to one place only since we've got two bombs and split my bombs evenly so I can have the maximum effect on target. So I need to decide myself. Yeah, let's go for this one. So before I hit accept, I'm going to change the steer point to 16 and accept here. So I've got two targets, two bombs. Um, I've preset the steer points for, th for those targets. And now I consider myself done with the target uh, preselection. Uh, so those are going to be converted as steer points in my DD. And I will be able to quick select those uh, in flight. 
So there we go. Uh, we've got two bombs, two targets, um, maximum effect on target if possible. And uh, yes, um, we're going to uh, enter the um, SAM areas and probably try to have the uh, seed flight getting here before we do. So it's important to get information on HSD on where they stand to see if they are going to cover you and uh, target those SAMs for you. Um, yeah. So we've got that covered. And what other information could be useful for you? Um, well, you've got a flight plan. So this is a review of the um, uh, steer points that you've got currently. Uh, five, so four. So you've got patrol duration here, which is a meetup point basically. And then you see between five and six, those are going to be going to be action search and destroy. So anything you've got there is basically search and destroy. So then seven, eight, nine to eleven. There you go. And ten being the refuel and eleven being the alternate uh, base. So you see one to eleven. And you can quickly switch to the other flights from the same package by the drop menu here. There we go. Um, what are the things? Other battle. Um, this is important if you want to check uh, the enemy forces. Uh, important to select first the flag and uh, check if you got anything that is interesting and you're searching or looking for. Just go to find. And uh, once you select a thing, find and get there. Uh, but for now, that's uh, that's that's it. And um, yeah, so um, we've got the two st target strip points. One thing that we could be changing uh, for the sake of, or uh, you could be changing also here the bullseye to change the position. Um, I can draw lines, for example. So I wanted to see the DMZ lines. So I'm going to hit additional strip point one, additional strip point line one, and for example here, there we go because they're already in the DMZ. So we'll have uh, here a line for the DMZ. Um, quickly drawn, obviously, but you can refine that, change that a bit to see a bit the uh, front line, so you can see where they where they are in terms of uh, getting into the uh, actual. Um, uh, border uh, with uh, South Korea. So there we go. Um, other menus that might be interesting for you is the Intel. Uh, Intel gives you information, obviously, Intel, uh, on the um, enemy forces and things that you need to uh, be aware of. Um, be advised that those represent the information that is available at this point. So the air power supply and ground power will change and shift over time, uh, depending on the supply rate and the type of uh, discovery you make also on the field. And those values might change depending on where we stand on the numbers of air defenses, for example, remaining ground power, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you can change that to other type of um, uh, units, uh, depending on what you're looking for. One thing that is important is the focus uh, in terms of game engine currently. So right now, the operations, so anything flying would be defensive over Seoul and being offensive over Pyongyang uh, here. Um, OC operations starting at 6, so it means that um, the strike or the uh, off offensive counter air basically is going to start at 6.00, so in one hour from now more or less. Then the ground, the ground currently is in defensive posture, um, means that they are currently trying to defend Seoul, um, so that's why we need to relieve them a bit from the current situation. As you can see, there's a lot of um, artillery around the uh, DMZ. And the defensive priority is still, that's quite obvious because we need to defend the capital here, capital city. Um, force levels, you can change that just to see that over time, but this is interesting to see how it uh, changes over time. Um, so this is where you would keep track of it. 
then you're going to get the, G, the J start replay. Um, so that's for now, you cannot do that because obviously we're we'll, in the first seconds of the campaign, but it will take a couple hours um, before your current time and replay the ground movements that it sees on the ground. So this is also interesting to see where the enemies or the friendlies are currently moving. Squadron information, we already done that earlier. This is just another way to actually access it. And then you've got Zero Tail, which is basically the uh, pilot rooster um, uh, from the squadron. So there we go. Uh, this is the second page. Then um, logbook, ACMI, all of things are pretty standards. This is not uh, um, campaign related. Um, and that's about it for the um, for the uh, fragging itself. I, I I hope I've covered everything. I might have missed a couple of things, so let me know in the comments if you think that uh, you want to see other things and uh, you have probably difficulties. One last thing is the um, obviously the um, uh, flight plane in terms of height. Uh, you can change that obviously if you want. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, next time, probably, I will cover some other third-party tools that actually help a lot when it comes to campaign and mission planning in Falcon, such as uh, Weapon Daily Planner, because those are very important when it comes to uh, getting yourself custom with the uh, the mission itself. So I'm going to stop here for today. Um, hope it helped, and uh, see you for another tutorials. Don't hesitate to leave comments, and uh, so it can help me to refine the type of content that you would, might need for next time. Until then, uh, enjoy uh, your flights. Hope you will have much more insight on how to deal with the campaign engine, and see you for the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.